Well, good morning, everybody. It's the next morning, and uh, this thing's been charging all night. Let's see what happens. Ah, same thing, huh? Okay. So, so it sounds like uh, a weak battery, but I don't think it is. I think we may have another issue here. Uh, one thing I did notice was that the positive battery cable here was pretty corroded, pretty rusty. And I know that this mower came from the coast. So, uh, you know, it got me wondering if maybe the connection here on the positive isn't as good as it should be. That's yeah, pretty rusty. Let's take this apart, clean it up a little bit. Probably should clean up the negative terminal too, I suppose. So this is a perfect example. All I did was just move that cable around and break some of the rust off. Now we can fire this baby up. Nice. All right, I'm going to continue to take these cables off and clean them real well. And then we're going to test this baby out. Let's see if we can get good old pair of vice grips working for us today. Dang. Dang is right. Well, let's see. We'll go ahead and take off the negative here. It doesn't look as bad. That bolt's not too bad. The negative cable's not too rusty. It's, it's mainly was just this positive cable here. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get anywhere like this. We made a little progress there. I'm going to spray some penetrating lube on there. Hopefully that'll help us out. It's nice to have already found the problem, why it wouldn't start. Sometimes you get lucky like that, boys. Usually you don't, but sometimes you do. Oh, well, good enough. Broke the bolt, I wasn't going to reuse it anyways. Now you can get a close look and see this whole cable is completely rusted here, barely making a connection. Clean it till you get bare metal. Let's 
This is just a sanding sponge I'm using here. Getting better. Clean up the back side here. Also want to clean the battery terminals themselves. So I don't know if you can see but this battery cable has a lot of green corrosion there. Uh, I mixed up some baking soda and water and I'm just going to soak this in here and you can see it bubbling. Pour a little bit on here too to deactivate any acid that has leaked. But this baking soda and water is how you, how you clean up uh, battery acid, uh, corrosion and whatnot. Works great. You guys can't see it, but this cable here is just foaming away inside this solution. All, like I say, all it is is baking soda and water. So just make sure you rinse all this off when you're done, otherwise you'll end up with a white powdery abrasive residue everywhere. And doesn't that look nice? Looks like brand new wire connector. And I'm just going to make sure to rinse everything here. Try to get all that baking soda off everything, otherwise it just leaves a mess. Alright, everything's nice and cleaned up. I have some new hardware on here to mount things up. Ah, looks like it's millimeter stuff that I used. Crap. A couple of 10 millimeters will do the trick here. Already got that one tightened up. All right, it seems good and tight. Good and tight. Okay. I was just looking at the solenoid posts. And they don't seem to be too rusty, so that's good. Yeah, let's see if, see if this thing will fire up. Choke. Yeah, I think we're out of gas, but at least we're turning over now, so that was the big problem. Oh, I realized I didn't have the choke on. Let's try this again. So something that we are going to need to do, it's always important, is to clean out the fuel system as best as possible. Um, I'm definitely going to put a new fuel filter on here. I'm going to try to empty out the gas tank and blow some air in there to get out any sediment that's left in there. So you want to start with a clean fuel system, as clean as possible. Uh, these carburetors are kind of hard to drain. If I'm able to, I'm gonna, gonna try to drain the carburetor too and flush it out. So that's good, it looks like it's draining out of the tank. So that's good. Let's see how much we can get out of there. Depending on where your fuel line attaches in your gas tank, sometimes you can drain them. 
Uh, other times they, they won't drain. You have to uh, pump, pump it out or take off the gas tank and empty it that way. But luckily, this one's draining, so that's good. It'll drain out as much fuel as possible. So we'll empty the gas tank and let it dry out in case there's any moisture in there. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and inspect the air filter on this thing. Ouch! A damn pair of pliers for that. Sometimes these bolts on these twin cylinders don't come out like this one. Someone tightened it too much and now it's stripped. So we're not going to be able to take that one off. And uh, how I fixed that in the past was pretty barbaric. I just kind of like hacked down through it. Let's see if we can figure out a better way to do it this time. Because this cover is not going to come off until we get that stinker loose. Okay. So you can see where we're at here, folks. This just turns and turns and turns and it's not going to come loose. But I've come across this before, and it becomes a real pain in the butt just trying to take this cover off because these things get stripped out. Oh, wait a sec, is this one loose? All right, it finally came loose. Lucked out, boys, because it's a mess once you try to have to hack this stuff up to get into it. Let's see, pretty dirty. Yeah, he's going to need a new air filter. And I'm going to have to re-glue this stud into here or something so it doesn't just spin like that. So you can see, I'll, I'll spray some air into the tank here. And we're still getting a little bit of gas coming out. Actually, we're getting a lot of gas coming out. Make sure to have a rag down there. So clearly, we still need to let this tank dry out a bit. So this is a nice feature here, of course. You can see how many hours total are on the machine. I don't know if you all can see that, but it says 308. So it only has 308 hours. All right, so while the gas tank is drying out, um, I'm gonna see if I can drain the carburetor, flush it out as well. Sometimes on this model engine, uh, it's pretty tough to get to the carburetor drain bolt. But we'll see what we have. So you want to disconnect the wiring here. And that just lifts off. So this is good news. Let me see if I can show you. So on this style carburetor, you can see we have the um, backfire solenoid or the fuel solenoid that comes off the side of the carburetor and not off the bottom. So this one's a little easier to get to. So let's go ahead and take that off. The ones that come out of the bottom of the carburetor are definitely more difficult to get to. So let's see if we can unscrew that thing. All right, so let's go ahead and disconnect the wiring here. 
you go. And you have to have a uh, special tool here. What I have is a, um, it's a half inch wrench. But if you look close, I've, gr I've grinded it quite thin so it can fit up there like that. Otherwise, it's not going to fit. So let's see if I can get to where I can get some leverage here to bust this thing loose. hurt my thumb on that one okay so we're gonna get some fuel that comes out of here and there's probably a washer so don't lose that a lot of times there are a little aluminum washer on here okay there she blows yeah and that's what our uh, fuel anti-backfire solenoid looks like. That little plunger goes in and out. You can hear it click when you turn on the key. If it doesn't click, then it may be bad. All right, so I'm gonna blow some air in there. All right, let's get some air going. And some carburetor cleaner. Just try and flush this out a little bit. The air really helps. So this is the down and dirty cheap way to clean out your carburetor float bowl on this model. Uh, you can see you might be able to get to those two bolts that holds the float bowl on, but it's going to take some effort. You may have to remove this whole bracket here, but uh, I think this thing was running pretty good, so I'm just going to try this trick first. Make sure if there's any trapped water in there. Get flushed out. Blow out this little guy. Kind of hard to tell, but there is an aluminum washer on there. All right, back together. Be careful not to over tighten this. Yep, you knew I was going to say it. All right. Don't over tighten it. That should be good enough. Hook up the power. So, it'll probably be a good idea to adjust the valves on this thing, eh? One thing I'm gonna do is just uh, try to blow off a lot of this excess crud on here so nothing falls into the valve compartment. So I've already replaced the air filter and uh, I did change the blades. I forgot to film both of those. But anyways, we're moving on to uh, adjusting the valves. Let's see how easy this cover comes off. Sometimes they're a real pain in the rear. Go ahead and take out the spark plug because I'm going to replace that. And we have to have it out to find top dead center. Definitely time for new spark plugs. Indeed. So you never know if there's going to be a gasket back here or if they just use um, used some sort of sealant. 
oftentimes there's oil up in there so you'll want to get a rag in place I have my 3 8 inch socket here let's see how easy this comes off like it's going to come off easy and you may not have noticed but I do try to have the front end up a little bit um, so if oil does leak out well this prevents oil from leaking out sometimes if the front end is up in the air but this is nice this one looks like it's coming right off Yep. And you know, if this one has a gasket, and be careful because if you're careful, you can keep the gasket intact and reuse it. If you rip it, you're going to have to replace it. So just be careful peeling it off of here. Oh, come on. Yes. Almost there. Don't rip. Don't rip. Uh, yes. Good. We can reuse it. And that's what the inside of that looks like. Just clean it up a little bit here. So according to the manual, you get the engine at top dead center on the compression stroke and then you adjust both valves to five thousands. So let me show you how to do that. You're going to want to rotate the engine, stick your screwdriver inside the spark plug hole so you can follow the piston travel, see how it's moving in. And if you notice, this valve is also getting opened right now as the pistons moving down. So we're coming right up on the compression stroke because that's the intake valve opening letting fuel into the the full cylinder sleeve and now we're heading up on the compression stroke which is the stroke where the spark happens of course and we're going to want to follow the screwdriver all the way out to its highest point and you can go back and forth if you miss it so all the way up and watch that screwdriver I always watch it right here at the metal that once it reach its highest once it once it reaches its highest point of travel that's where you want to that's where you want to adjust and check the valves at so follow the screwdriver that there is its highest point boy is it's not going up any farther so let's check these valves all right so I have our five thousands here it's and let's go ahead and slide it in here yeah that's a little loose there should be more resistance than that and let's check the exhaust exhaust feels pretty good yeah you wiggle it a little bit so you can get the correct gap and it's actually a little tight but I think it's it's probably within tolerance here yeah see it's a little stiff dragging it out but that one's probably set right on or pretty close it might be set at point it might be set at four thousandths or so well, let me check let's see how a three goes in there Yeah, see, a three goes in there pretty easily. So it's probably set at about four thousandths, which, which I'm going to call that okay.
But this one, the intake, we need to adjust. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have a Torx bit. Uh, it looks like it's a Torx 40, maybe. Yeah, a Torx 40. And I'm just going to see if I can tighten this thing uh, to see if this lock nut came loose. No, it's still pretty tight. So I don't know why Briggs does this, but the only wrench that fits is a 13 millimeter. So we're going to want to crack this loose a little bit. Hold on to this so you don't break anything. There we go. Just loosen it up a little bit. So we can tighten this set screw just a hair. And we'll recheck our adjustment now. Still needs a little more. Oops. Have to loosen. Loosen up that lock nut a bit. All right, let's see where we're at now. A little tight. But you can see how we do this. All right, so now we have to hold the adjustment screw in place while we tighten it. This is the tricky part. get a little bit tight yeah so this setup here you're only supposed to torque down to about 60 inch pounds come back recheck yeah see it's it's loosened up a little bit so oftentimes that happens when you're tightening it down and you recheck you'll see it's it's loose again so let's see if we can tighten that a little bit Ooh, that should be good Yeah, so now it drags a little bit coming out of there. And when you pull it, it drags just a little bit. That's what you want. So we'll want to clean up this gasket surface a little bit here. All right, let's put this side back on. You know, one thing I should do is just double check that these rocker bolts are tight. All right, so I, I double checked that these um, rocker bolts were tight as well. I wanted to make sure to mention that, and they were. Since I'm reusing uh, this gasket, I'm gonna cinch it down good and tight. It won't leak. Trust me, I know what I'm doing sometimes. All right, I'll put a new spark plug in here and we'll go over to the other side. All right, let's see what we have over on this side. <clears throat> you. Nasty. All right, let's see what we find on this one. It was definitely time, it had about 300 hours on it, this engine, so it was time to uh, adjust them. And it was a good thing we did. The intake was starting to get out of adjustment on, on the, that side over there. So this is another thing that you should always check. So, so this is your vacuum pulse line. This is the rubber hose that actually works your fuel pump and it does it from the vacuum that's coming from the engine. So if there's any sort of cracks or holes in this hose, you need to replace it. And I'm starting to notice there's a crack in this one, so I think we need to replace this one.
it'll save you from having fuel delivery problems in the future. All right, let's see if we can get this off. Yeah. So I just want to show you, can you guys see the cracks in it there? That's why we would need to replace this one. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is make sure these rocker bolts are tight. And they are. At least that one was. Okay. Now we need to rotate this engine until we're at top dead center on the compression stroke. So we're going to watch for this valve. Um, yeah, that's the intake, so that one needs to go down. Oops, I see a chunk of something in there. There we go. All right. So the piston should be moving down because the intake valve is opening. Now we're on the compression stroke. And we've got to get to it. And we're looking for top dead center again, just like on the other side. When the screwdriver reaches its highest point of travel, that should be the place. Let's pull out our five thousandths and check, see where we're at. That one's loose, and that that one's loose too. So we'll tighten both of these up on this side. So I'm going to do this same procedure on this side and get both of these and uh, I'll see you on the other side. New spark plug. Three quarters of a turn, pass finger tight or right about there. Alright, I think we're done up front here, so we put this back on. Don't forget, to plug, don't forget to plug in the lights. Alright, so we got to change the oil on this thing and uh, check the drain because they're always loose. And when you when you do an oil change on any Briggs engine. You do need to check the, uh, the spout here that threads into the engine. It is always loose. See that? That's why all that oil is leaking out of here. It's not easy to tighten that thing, believe it or not. Um, there's little ears on it that uh, hold this little plastic piece in place and they're really easy to break off if you try using a pair of pliers or something to tighten it so um, let's go ahead and drain it and I'll show you how to do that and I'll also show you how to tighten up that alright so let's go ahead and tighten up this drain make sure to do this every one of them is loose that comes in here Briggs needs to figure that out what the heck's going on and there's no real easy way to get to it. Um, the socket doesn't fit over it. Wrenches are hard to get in there. And that little nub right there uh, is really easy to break off. There's one on each side, which is uh, how your quick release oil snaps into place. So if those get broken off, uh, your little oil cap here won't stay on. And, uh, and you're screwed you have to end up buying a whole new uh, valve that screws into the engine there. But for now, hopefully we don't end up needing to do that. And I can't remember what size this is. What is this a 15 sixteenths? That's too big. 13 16 That's too small. It's a 7 8 and The 7 8 doesn't fit. See, this is the problem I run into um, every time I deal with these. I don't have metric wrenches that big.
looks like the 15 sixteenths is as close as I can get. And I can get a little bit of a tighten up on there. But you can see there's just no room. So another way I do it is I get the biggest pair of uh, pliers I have, channel locks, and I try to go about it that way. But once again, it's real easy to get caught up on these nubs, and they break off easily, and then you're screwed. So just be careful. This is the only way I've figured out how to do this. If you guys have any tips, please let me know. Because I hate having to do it this way. It's just a disaster waiting to happen. Every time. But you can see, get quite a bit of a crank on this thing. They, they come very loose. Alright, now I need to start being careful because I got that other nub on here. Okay, so that's a little bit tighter. I'm going to keep going on this uh, until I can get it as tight as I can. And then we'll drain the oil. And if you break a nub, your day's ruined. Don't break a nub. So I just need to finish out uh, airing out this gas tank here in the sun and letting it dry out. I think I got some rain in there. So once we do that, we can fuel this thing up, fire it up, heat up the oil, and then change the oil in the oil filter. And then I think we're done. I've been airing out the gas tank for several days now out here in the sun, so I know it's all dried out. I also sprayed some air in there to get out any sediment that was left. Time to fill it up. Just luck. So the fuel pump has to fill up the carburetor because we drained the carburetor. So that takes a little bit. 